Welcome back to Humboldt State tonight. J.B. Mathers joined by now the head volleyball coach for the HSU Lady Jacks, Sue Woodstra, fresh back from uh, Beijing. I know there's a lot of controversy here in the States. You were actually there. Is there a pronounce, uh, correct pronunciation for the uh, city of Beijing? Uh, well, since I worked with several Chinese yes. people um, pretty directly, they always said Beijing. Okay. So I'm going with that. She was there. She took the silver medal, so she knows. All right, talk about the experience. Uh, your, for you do, folks that don't know, Sue was the captain of the silver medal team playing in 1984. And what was it like to come back now as a coach? Well, very, very different. Uh, it's, uh, as an athlete, you're focused on yourself, making sure you're completely prepared, healthy, mentally, physically, um, all those things, and that you're prepared to, to contribute whatever you can to the team. Um, as a coach, uh, you can't be so single-minded. Uh, you're, you're looking at everybody and trying to make sure everybody is in that right spot mentally and physically and, and as well as doing scouting and, and preparing our, our uh, schedule for the day and schedule for the month and year and, and uh, um, all sorts of things like that. So there's certainly a lot more that goes into it as a coach. Well, you know, here I am thinking you're getting caught up in the moment, Beijing and this magical ride. But I'm sure you were keeping, obviously, as you said, very busy. And in the end, you were in Beijing and it was the Olympics. But did you just find yourself coaching? Yeah, actually. And, and we knew that going in. We, uh, there was the opening ceremonies. We started competing the day after opening ceremonies. We competed every other day. Um, we alternated with the men's uh, teams. And then we finished the day before closing ceremonies. And on our competition days, generally, we would practice and rest and then play. Uh, on our practice or our, our off days, uh, we would practice again and then um, rest and have a scouting video session. And we might have another practice, we might not. Uh, so we really didn't have a chance to look up until uh, we beat uh, Cuba and we were going into the finals. And we just kind of just kind of looked up <laughs> at that <laughs> moment and said, whoa. Obviously yeah. now for the folks back in Humboldt County in the States, Sue Woodstra is with Team USA, so we're keeping an eye on it. And I think going in, you guys are ranked number four in the world. So maybe you get in the medal round, maybe not. Uh, odds would say you, you weren't going to. But going in, did, did you girls know how good you were? I think our, uh, our group, yes, we did know that we had that possibility. And that certainly was a goal. Uh, our goal actually was to get a gold medal. Um, and it, I mean, I think most every team, most every team going in there should have that goal. Right. Um, there were conceivably seven teams that could win a medal, and so we knew it was going to be very, very competitive. Uh, I think other other uh, people probably didn't think we'd make it out of pool play. Um, some others then didn't think we'd beat Italy, and then <laughs> and what some a great match that was! Cuba. I still remember staying at yeah. home watching. Uh, your team play Italy, so hey, there's Sue on the side, but the way you guys kind of started off slow and then you could just see the momentum <laughs> switch. And yeah, you might have been down on the scoreboard, but I think everybody, including Italy, knew how that thing was going to finish. Yeah, it started out slow. I think that's a that's an awful good way to put it. <laughs> you know, I mean, even if you think of the whole Olympics, you know, we, we I think we're pretty prepared to play well from the beginning. Um, the incident with uh, Wiz Bachman and her, her parents was, was really difficult. A terrible um, situation. It was uh, it was really difficult to deal with, and it was just it was a few hours before we played our first match, and um, many of our players and and I've known Wiz for for maybe 15 years now, and, and her family, and, and it really hit us hard. So it was it was difficult to kind of regroup and come back from that. We played uh, okay against Japan. We didn't play so well against Cuba the first match, um, not so well against Venezuela, um, but from that point on, we kind of started getting a getting a roll going, getting a better, better rhythm going, and, and we certainly uh, played very well when we really had to, and, and that's, a, that's a really neat thing to be able to do. All right, a silver medal as a player, silver medal as a coach, how do they compare? <laughs> well, first of all, uh, as a player, I actually got a medal. <laughs> okay, yeah. As a coach, you don't. <laughs> um, but it, it's just, it's a very different, uh, very different experience, and, and I think uh, I, I really cherish both experiences. Um, I was very... Uh, blessed to be able to be in this situation you know with with uh, Jenny Longping as the head coach and and with Dan and and uh, um, Dr. Richmond being supportive of, of me taking a leave of it absence wasn't like you left uh, you know let's see the, the game started what on the 8th of August and you left I mean this has been a long process it has I, I was gone from HSU for almost a year and a half a little less than a year and a half and 
it was it was a difficult decision to leave here, but knowing that I, I uh, could come back and, and would come back certainly made it a bit easier. So so you get the medal in one, no medal in the other, but you really get to take part. Uh, would you prefer 84 or uh, 08? <laughs> I, I honestly, I have no preference. Okay. Um, I, it's, uh, they're both really different. Um, it's, uh, I, I guess I should say I do have a preference. It's always preference because it's always better to be out on the court. <laughs> you can control <laughs> stuff a little bit more, right? Exactly. Now, exactly. talk about the off uh you know keeping your players focused and like you said you were busy most of the time but what was beijing like i mean here's a uh one of the the biggest cities in the world now and really beijing emerged to the world uh mm -hmm. on august day what was beijing like for you and your players we were well as i said we're, we were very focused um our schedule was was um pretty compacted uh players the players are professionals i mean they are professional athletes and and um, they're very focused on what they wanted to achieve, and, and uh, so that drove what they did during the day, uh, on our off days in particular. And um, I think several, a few of them got out to see maybe a couple of other events. Uh, it, would be, it would be wonderful to be in a, in a different sport where you compete for maybe three or four days. And then you can go watch some others, but that's not our sport. Yeah, I guess, you know, a lot of the athletes, they compete one day. The fencers, they went right at the get-go and got yeah. to enjoy themselves the rest of the time. You, part of a team sport, you really, uh, you know, had to, to focus the entire time. And you weren't the dream team like the men's basketball <laughs> team who are also superstars and yeah. could go to all the different venues. Uh, okay, talk about what it's like now coming back to Humboldt State. Here you are coaching professionals, the best of the best, and now you've got, you know, student athletes which uh, not to take anything away from them but obviously not as talented and i'm sure the focus is you know you, how do you find yourself adjusting to get back to you know student athletes here at humboldt state opposed to the best in the world um the, actually the whole atmosphere is different coming back to humboldt it's a little bit smaller than beijing right, and, right. and uh you know the atmosphere we were just in but uh I, this it's it's really the reason i wanted to come back to hsu is coming back and working with the athletes and um, you know, they come out and they work just as hard. Uh, they may not be able to jump as high, and they may not be 6'3 or 6'4 or 6'7 um, and touch 11 feet, but uh, they work just as hard and, and they want to achieve their best, and uh, that's what we're looking for. What did the girls say to you when you came back? Coach, I saw you on TV, <laughs> I saw you doing this. I mean, how cool was that for them to see their coach? at the Olympic Games? Uh, you'll have to ask them, okay. but I, I think they enjoyed it. I'm you sure know, they it's, did. <laughs> it's, uh, I've actually been getting a lot of people saying that they, they enjoyed seeing me there and it just made the Olympics a little more special for them. And, and that really that really touches me. It's, it's, it's really cool to be able to share that with a lot of people. Well, I know for me personally, and I'm sure a lot of you folks out there, it, it was personal to say, hey, one of ours is in Beijing. I mean, here it was, Sue Woodstern, high def, I'm on MSNBC, and it's Team USA. And uh, I know previously I've gotten to see your silver medal, the torch you ran with in 96. Let me get Sue's one of the all-time greats for Team USA Volleyball. So next time you come on, bring the medal, okay? I will. All right, fair enough. Sue Woodstern, thank you so much. It's Humboldt State tonight. We're coming right back with Sean Quincy. I'm J.B. Mathers.